At what point did you start realizing I, I actually have the like real power here? And I don't mean that in like a, <laughs> you know, uh, hoisting a sword above your head or something like yeah. that. But I mean like the power to change people's lives. Um, you know, I think you go through as a, as a, but whatever worker, you know, in, in any industry, you go through different jobs and you find out what you're really good at. You know, whether it's on the sales side, whether it's on, you know, um, a more audit level side or detail side. And, and I think for me, um, you know, that's where I gravitated to was um, because I ended I, I, I tend to think things through, maybe overthink from time to time. Yeah, yeah. But, for example, yeah. when I asked you to do this, you were like, sure, we'll do it in like a few weeks so I can think about what I was going to say. And I was like, no, no, oh, you no. agreed we're doing it this yeah. week. Yeah, I would have much rather overthought it. But, uh, but I, I, you know, it, it's, it's definitely one of those, probably the, the, the one time that I remember that I was like, whoa, you know, this did make a difference was at my first job, and I was new to kind of a credit officer role. And I was, we were working, I was at the banker's bank, and we were working with another bank. So I was bank, my, our customers there were other bankers, you know, that were way more experienced than I was. And I was probably late 20s at the time. And um, they had approached us about, about doing a particular deal. And I just couldn't get there. You know, I just, the numbers didn't work for me. I didn't feel good about the deal. And it was like, okay, I'm going to tell this banker with way more experience that I can't get comfortable with their deal. And that banker, he, he, we ended up saying, you know, we can't help you with it. And he was like, totally get it. He sent me a note. It was probably five, six months later. And he was like, thanks for the no. Because it ended up that they didn't do the deal, and it was, it was a deal that they shouldn't have done. You know, so and that's why I kind of ended up with saying no to a borrower is not always a bad thing. You know, it's really us taking a look at it and going, you know, this, this may be too much leverage for you. And some borrowers appreciate that. And others, you know, take it personal. And it's really, it's, it's really not that, you know, we just look at it from the standpoint of, you know, what, what things are, you know, we think are going to work and, um, you know, decide there. So. so one of the things that sticks out to me about you, in fact, some of the very first times we met was your willingness to, to say no. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, um, I've, I've talked several times with various people on the podcast about this trait called agreeableness, Mm -hmm. right? And so this is, you know, how likely are you to decide that I would rather the group get along um, and I don't really care if we get to the correct answer versus I need to resolve this conflict and I don't care how much disturbance it makes. Uh Are you, I mean, are you, where do you fall on that scale? 100 (laughs) being the most agreeable, zero being completely disagreeable. Um, You know, I would hope I'm kind of in the middle. Um, I, but you've got to have an opinion, you know, I don't, uh, and, and, and my opinion might be totally different than another person's, but I'm not, I would never encourage a credit, uh, an underwriter not to say anything, you know, and I've, I've talked to people that have worked with me over the years, you know, and if I, I charge them with underwriting a deal and if they don't like it, raise your hand, you know, don't sit there and, and take orders from, um, somebody and just, you know, not think through it, you know, have an opinion, voice it. I think there's, you know, you can do it in a way that, uh, certainly is, is better, um, received than, than other times. But I think, um, you know, inherently from a banking perspective, uh, there's always that, that, push and pull from the sales side and the credit side. And I think I've always worked in institutions what, what, that valued that separation, that valued that um, push and pull from the standpoint of, yeah, some, you know, you want to make the deal, but you've got to have that control. So uh, if I was, I, like I said, I've been fortunate to be in institutions 
that understood that balance. You know, if it gets out of balance and it's more about sales than it is about credit, that's when your decision, you know, maybe is is going to be uh, just do the deal. You do, know? You, do you think people can learn to be more disagreeable or to raise their hand like that? Or is it yeah. something you either got it or you don't? Um, I think they can either be encouraged to do it or not. Um, some people maybe never get comfortable with it. Those aren't the underwriters that I want. Okay. Yeah. And, um, but if there, there's been times where, you know, I've got to say, Hey, it's okay. You know, like if you don't like something, I want to, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to say something. So are you disagreeable in other parts of your life? (laughs) I mean, would, would your family say no? Um, I don't think so, but would your family? Would, I mean, if they, if they were listening to this, they would say, "No, Rita, <laughs> she's always bringing up the that, problems and no, making sure we confront it." And I think most people would just say that I've got an opinion okay. on stuff, and um, I'm not afraid to voice it, you know. And if it's if it's um, I, I, if it's something that that is um, that I feel needs to be brought forward. That's part of my job. I'm not going to apologize for it. And so, um, and, and, and like I said, that's from an underwriter standpoint, I want underwriters that bring to the forefront issues and, and not just sit there and do their job and not ask questions. And I think, you know, you've got to be in an environment that appreciates that, that encourages it, or else... You do end up with people that are afraid to speak up, you know, or afraid to say anything. And, and I, I, you know, I, th- there's a lot of differences in an organization from a diversity standpoint that that becomes pretty important to me personally. So, um, yeah. Would you say that people feel like they can disagree with you? Um. I would think so. I mean, the reason I ask, so, <laughs> so I had a chemist on named uh, Dr. Doug Sammons, and, uh, and he's one of the most disagreeable people on the face of the earth, like n- no joke. Uh, he's a chemist that has figured out, discovered all sorts mm-hmm. of interesting things. And um, it took him the better part of four or five decades to figure out that the reason that people didn't disagree with him was because he was so disagreeable that he didn't he didn't know. And I I just think like you are an extraordinarily confident person, or at least that's the way that it comes off. And so I I'm just curious because I think you're <laughs> you're in a, you're in an interesting dichotomy, right? You are saying I want people to disagree more. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they can be taught that you are already pretty disagreeable. So it would be hard to cultivate that. I don't know. I, yeah. I, this is, I'm just thinking here. Yeah. I, I just, um, I just don't, would, would be real hesitant on um, kind of a group think kind of thing. It's okay for people to disagree. It, it's totally okay. If I don't like a deal, I'm not going to, you know, if, if, it, if we're voting on a, making a loan. If I can't get comfortable, I'm not going to vote on it just because the five other people at the, pa- at the table <laughs> says it's a good deal. You know, like... like as, a, as a member of the board of directors, I can say <laughs> that is awesome. The, the deal might still get done, but I don't want to vote just because everybody else says yes. You know, there may be times where, you know, you talk through a deal and, and maybe somebody brings up a point that says, well, you know, what about this? I can be swayed for sure. Oh, really? For okay. sure. You know, um, that's probably the key yeah. thing, right? If you're super yeah. disagreeable, but that's because yeah. you're already convinced you're yeah. right. Yeah. I then think, no one will. Yeah. I think you just have to listen. And uh, I might go into some of the meetings um, with, OK, I I'm not comfortable with this or I want this. And then, you know, you talk through it. And, and I, I will get to the point where it was like, okay, I can, I can get there on this deal. So, um, and I think it just takes open communication and respect for all the people at the table and all their opinions to get to that, that point. But I, I, um, I don't have, um, you know, a real issue with somebody, with somebody disagreeing with something, um, Everybody should have their opinion, and um, 
like I said, I, as an underwriter, I'd rather have an underwriter voice it than keep it inside and never say anything about it. Thanks for watching this podcast short. You can find the rest of the interview on my channel. If you like this video, I hope you'll hit the like button and consider subscribing. I release a new interview with an interesting person every Wednesday morning.